I'm Colin Alexander, and I'm presenting from my smoke-filled bunker in uh, the Oakland Hills. In 1631, Robert Barker and Martin Lucas set out to publish a reprint of the King James Bible. They failed spectacularly, so spectacularly that it became known as the Wicked Bible, and every copy was ordered burned by King Charles I, with only 11 surviving. Now, in the in this time period, back in the 15th century, it would have cost the equivalent of 10 to 20 thousand dollars to buy a Bible, limiting Bible ownership to basically the church and the very wealthy. The invention of the printing press, however, in 1455, lowered those costs by about 80 percent. And by the time of the Reformation, a skilled worker could work for about two to three works a weeks and actually buy a Bible. That being said, if you're gonna pay three weeks wages for a book, you really want it to be flawless. But before the printing presses, monks would actually copy the Bible by hand with meticulous review of their transcriptions. Printers were expected to be just as meticulous. However, between 1560 and 1644, there were approximately 144 editions of the Bible printed. Mistakes were bound to be made. But side note, this guy that's on the slide right now, even after the printing press, monks were still copying the Bible by hand. Abbot Johannes Trithemius of Sponheim wrote a letter in 1492 called De Laud Scriptorum in Praise of Scribes, wherein he stated, the printed book is made of paper and like paper will quickly disappear. But the scribe working with parchment ensures lasting remembrance for himself and his text. Trithemius was basically the first hipster monk. And he was saying, sure, the printing press is great, but you really haven't heard God's word until reading it on the original parchment. But anyway, back to the story. The King James Bible contains about 783,137 words. With so many printings of the Bible, you could expect some mistakes, such as the so-called murderer's Bible. Should have read, let the children be filled, but instead reads, let the children be killed. The Sin On Bible, wherein it should read sin no more, but instead instructs sin on more. A single letter, a simple inversion, forgivable. These were not as bad as the Wicked Bible. It took a full year for Barker and Lucas's misprint to catch up with them. But when it did, they felt the full wrath of God. The most well-known portion of the Bible is the Ten Commandments, which outline what we're not supposed to do, murder, steal, covet, etc. The Wicked Bible contains an error of omission in the Ten Commandments, specifically in Exodus 20.14, wherein it should state, thou shalt not commit adultery. Instead, it commands, thou shalt commit adultery. This is not, however, my TED Talk on my year of living biblically. This error alone was a disaster of biblical proportions. If it were the only error, the printers may have avoided the punishment that they received. However, in the King James Bible, Deuteronomy 524 states, Behold, the Lord our God hath shewed us his glory and his greatness. The wicked Bible of 1631, however, reads, Behold, the Lord our God hath shewed us his glory and his great ass. The omission could have been forgiven, but com commenting on God's posterior did not appear to be a typographical error. This addition suggested that rather than a mistake, it was a deliberate error. Now, Charles I and the Archbishop of Canterbury were pissed. The publishers were called, if not dragged, to the Star Chamber, which is a court of limited due process rights and a lot of power. But, you know, maybe Charles I would show some mercy. Not so much. Uh, instead, the publishers were fined, fined 300 pounds, of the equivalent of 50,000 pounds today, and deprived of their livelihood, their printing license. All copies of this Bible were ordered burned. Now, this mistake was a disaster for the editors. But what's even worse than having your life's work destroyed because of a simple typo? Deliberate sabotage. That's right. You needed a printing license to print the Bible, which Robert Barker had. 
a rival publisher, Bonham Norton, wanted to print the King James Bible. And it's believed that Norton convinced a heavily indebted individual in Barker's employ to sabotage the printing so that he could get the license and take over the publishing. Norton, however, was never caught, nor punished for what he did. Barker, however, didn't just lose his printing license. He lost far more. Because he published the Wicked Bible, and because of the loss, uh, well, and because of all the fines imposed by the Star Chamber, he wound up dying in debtor's prison. Now, his work, however, lives on. And I, for one, suspect that if God's form does have a posterior, it's exquisite. So please, raise a glass to editors and to publishers everywhere. May you catch all your errors, and if some are missed, may you at least avoid the wrath of God.